Our opening hymn will be number 722. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Spread the tidings all around. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Bear the news to every land. Climb the steeps and cross the waves. Onward tis our Lord's command. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Wafted on the rolling tide. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Tell to sinners far and wide. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing ye islands of the sea. Echo back ye ocean caves. Earth shall keep her jubilee. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing above the battle strife. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. By his death and endless life. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing it softly through the gloom when the heart for mercy craves. Sing and try up for the tomb. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Give the winds a mighty voice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Let the nations now rejoice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Shout salvation full and free. Highest hills and deepest caves. This our song of victory. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Our next hymn will be number 632, The Gospel is for All. And following this, uh, Brother Mike Sapp is going to lead us in a prayer. Of one the Lord has made the race, through one has come the fall. Where sin has gone must go his grace, the gospel is for all. The blessed gospel is for all, the gospel is for all. Where sin has gone must go his grace, the gospel is for all. Say not the heathen are at home, beyond we have no call. For why should we be blessed alone, the gospel is for all. The blessed gospel is for all, the gospel is for all. Where sin has gone must go his grace, the gospel is for all. Receive ye freely, freely give from every land they call. Unless they hear they cannot live, the gospel is for all. The blessed gospel is for all, the gospel is for all. Where sin has gone must go his grace, the gospel is for all. Would you all bow with me? Our Father, we once again, we humbly bow before you as we enter your throne room. And Father, we're just so thankful for this day and all the blessings you've given us. Father, we know that we are here to honor you, to remember you, and to praise your name. And Father, we, we're also thankful for your son Jesus and that great sacrifice that he made on our behalf and that we have this plan of salvation through him. Father, we're just so thankful we can meet here again today, that we can have fellowship with one another, we can 
We can hear another lesson from your word. We can sing psalms of praise your name. And, and we also have this, this avenue of prayer that we know that we can come to you, Father. We can pour out our hearts to you. And Father, we know that you will answer our prayers as you see fit. We might not always get what we want, but Father, we know that you, you give us what we need and you take care of us. And for that, we're so thankful. And Father, we pray that you would continue to be with this body that meets here. And Father, help us to continue to, to do your will, to do everything we can to, to live our lives more pleasing to you and to spread your word that we can reach more souls before it's everlastingly too late. Father, we also pray for Brother Guy this morning and be with him as he has a lesson prepared and be with him as he presents it. Let him have a ready recollection of what he has to say. And Father, help us to have open hearts and open minds to your word because we know that each and every time that we open the Bible up and study it, there's always a lesson there. There's always something there that will, that will benefit us and help us out in our, in our daily lives living for you, Father. Father, we also pray this morning for all those on our ongoing prayer list, and we have many people with different needs, and Father, we just ask that you continue to be with them, help comfort them, and help strengthen them as you see fit. And Father, we pray that we would continue to, to serve you, that we would continue to study your word each and every day, that we could become better servants. And Father, help us that when the opportunity comes that we have the right answers for someone who might be asking us about how we live our lives and what this means to each and every one of us. Father, we pray that we would continue to use those talents and abilities in a positive way back to you. And Father, we pray that we would all be, we would remind ourselves that this world is not our home, even though we are living here, but we are preparing for that, that home with you in heaven someday. And Father, we know that we can't do this alone. We know that we are sinners, we fall short, and we need your help, Father. And help us that we can resist the devil's temptations and continue to, to follow you in that pathway that will lead us into heaven someday. Father, we ask that you continue to watch over us and guide us, forgive us of our sins. It's in your son's precious name we pray. Amen. Number 717 will be our next hymn. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood's atoning Then I repented of my sins And won the victory Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing. How he made the lame to walk again, and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. I then obeyed his blessed commands and gained the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. 
I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Our next hymn will be number 368 to prepare our hearts and minds to partake of the Lord's Supper. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I find Thy power and Thine alone Can change the leper's spots and melt the heart of stone. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. And when before the throne I stand in him complete, I all lay my trophies down, all down at Jesus' feet. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. In 1 John 4, we read, In this the love of, of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we, all, we ought to love one another. A propitiation is an appeasement or an atonement. Under the covenant that God made with Israel, the Jewish people were commanded to do sacrifices of blood for sin. Countless animals were sacrificed each and every year, and once a year the priests would go into the Holy of Holies and anoint it with the blood of these animals. None of these sacrifices could do more than basically roll the sins forward until the next time. But we are given a more perfect covenant 
uh, a covenant of love. We understand that these animals could not do more than what we just said. And under this new covenant of love, only God could send the ultimate sacrifice of his son. Not because he needed the blood, but because he needed to show us what true love is. In verses 12, no one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in us. Let us pray at this time for the cup. Blessed Father in heaven, we, as we gather around here to partake of this memorial, Lord, we pray that you would bless each and every one of us and help us to remember that this is the blood of your Son. Lord, this is our prayer in your Son's name. Amen. I apologize. I meant the bread. Let us pray for the the cup at this time. Lord, we again pray that you would bless each and every one of us as we partake of this, your, your, the, the, that you have commanded us, the Lord's Supper, Lord. This is our prayer in your Son's name. Amen. The offering plates are prepared and they are left at the doorways. Um, At this time, we'll pray for the offering. God does not need our money, but we we need money to do the things that we have to do. Blessed Father in heaven, we, we pray that you would bless the offerings that we, we give, that they would further your word, and they would be to your glory, Lord. This is our prayer in your son's name. Amen. Number 781 will be a hymn before the lesson. Wonderful story of love, tell it to me again. Wonderful story of love, wake the immortal strain. Angels with rapture announce it, shepherds with wonders receive it. Sinner, oh, won't you believe it? Wonderful story of love. Wonderful, 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 wonderful story of love. Wonderful story of love. Though you are far away, wonderful story of love, still he does call today, calling from Calvary's mountain, down from the crystal bright fountain, in from the dawn of creation, wonderful story of love. Wonderful, 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 wonderful story of love, wonderful story of love, Jesus provides a rest, wonderful story of love. For all the pure and blessed, 
Rest in those mansions above us with those who've gone on before us. Singing the rapturous chorus, wonderful story of love, wonderful, 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 wonderful story of love. Great song choices this morning, huh? Thanks, Bill. All about having victory in Jesus and the wonderful story of love and, and tell it to me. And you know, it's it's good to be here, isn't it? It's good to be able to sing songs of praises to God. It's good to be able to encourage one another. Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, isn't it? And Don, thank you so much for taking our minds to that great sacrifice that was made out of love for us. I appreciate that, brother. And just so that y'all know, this is exciting stuff here. Don has consented to preach the sermon next Sunday. So come back and make sure you're here next Sunday to hear Don. I look forward to that. To me, that's exciting stuff. Because I don't even know what he's going to talk about. But I know it's going to be good. Because it's going to come out of the Word of God. So it'll be uplifting and encouraging. It'll help us all. And I'll tell you what. Bill, this morning... You had me reread about six sermons during the songs. But you know how I get when I hear songs like that that hit me, and it's like, oh, and I want to go off this way and that way and the other way. And most of you know, and I know we have some visitors here this morning, so I'm going to say this for those that are visiting. If it doesn't sound like I make sense this morning, there is a reason for that. Uh. I'm, I'm taking pain pills, and they're pretty tough. And they're making me feel a little bit out of it. In fact, right now, I'd much rather just put my head on a pillow. But the Lord always has something that he wants us to do. And I think it's very important that we take every opportunity to proclaim his word and to praise him. You know, David, with all his problems, and i that's why I love David so much. You look at, well, he was one messed up individual, wasn't he? Reminds me so much of me. Just like us, <laughs> Just like us Bill said. Such a messed up individual. But yet he was called the man after God's own heart. And not only that, some of the things that he wrote... Wow, why can't I think of those things? Well, of course, the Holy Spirit was helping him write it, right? But still, it says something about the character of the man who the Holy Spirit was working through. The depth at which he he talks about things. And it's just like, wow, I, I can't even think on those levels until I read it and I go, ooh, that was good. You ever do that when you read the Word of God? You read it and you go, ooh, that was good. How many times that happened to you in the course of a week? It happens to me in the course of a day. You just go, man. I don't know how many times, especially John Anthony and I, because you know that we talk a lot, you know, and John Anthony, I'll be talking, and, and both, both of us will say, you know what, as much as we've studied this stuff, and as much as we've been through classes, as much as we've, we've, been to the schools and, and studied under these, these, these men that really know the word of God and can almost quote the Bible cover to cover and all these kind of things and we sit there and we go, did you ever see that before? 
And what's really amazing is when both of us go, uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> God's great. And He loves us. And He gave us His Word so that we can continue to grow. It doesn't get boring, folks. We continue to grow every day. We continue to see new things all the time. And I appreciate the class that we had this morning and everybody's involvement in that. Because it makes us think above and beyond, doesn't it? It takes us into new horizons and new understanding. As we look into the Word of God and we go, wow, I'd never noticed that before. But my brother did or my sister did. And, and that helps us all, doesn't it? You know, one of the things that David wrote that is quoted in the New Testament that sometimes it's so easy to just go, huh. Because we know, we would have never known it was a prophecy if we had read it before we saw it in the New Testament and realized it was a prophecy. We wouldn't have known that. You know, the Jews didn't know that. And when Jesus brought it up, they went, whoa, wait a minute. And when Peter brought it up, they said, God forgive us. And it's this simple thing that says in Psalm 110, in verse 1, the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. The Lord says to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. It's so easy to read it and not really to think about it. You know, but even the Jews thought about it, they, they kind of knew it meant something different. I mean, here you have David who, boy, he is he's the king, right? all Israel looks up to David he's the king and he says the Lord said to my Lord huh does that even make sense from where his standpoint is in history you look at that and you go what what do you sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet you know, Jesus then used that in Matthew chapter 22. When all the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all those kind of people were just giving him a hard time. They were raking him over the coals. They were trying everything they could to trip him up. And they were, they were coming up with some very interesting arguments. But along the way, they asked some good questions too. <laughs> and, and the thing I love about the questions they ask is whether they were trying to trap him or not. Jesus had the perfect answer. Wouldn't that be nice? You know, the more we pray and the more we study, the better we are at answering. But if our answers don't come from the Word of God, what are they worth? Really not a whole lot. I mean, they might be good. But do you think my answer is going to be anywhere near as good as God's? No. Starting in verse 41 of Matthew chapter 22, it says, While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, What do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? You know, Jesus implements it this time. He says, What do you think about the Messiah? Because, they're, you know, he knows what they're thinking. He knows what's going on in their minds. And he says very simply, What do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? And they said, the son of David. That was their reply. And they understood that from Scripture, that one would come and sit on David's throne forever. And they understood that this was going to be the Messiah, the anointed one that was going to come and was going to sit on that throne. And they said, well, he's going to be the son of David. And Jesus asks this question. How is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him Lord? For he says, 
the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. Here's these Jews that wouldn't under, <laughs> didn't understand it any better than, than when it was written down back in David's time and they would look at it and go, huh? And Jesus asked them this question, well, how is it then? How is that possible? If then David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one could say a word in reply, and from that day on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. You know, the whole thing is, Jesus has just told them who he is. He just told them who he is. They didn't really want to deal with that. Because he just said, I'm the one that David's speaking of. Because I am greater than David. I am the Lord. It's saying Jehovah God said to Jesus Christ who, that this is exactly what I'm going to do. You're going to sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under my feet, under your feet. Wow. And they're sitting there going, mm-mm. Well, here in Luke 20 and verse 41 through 44 and Mark 12, 35 through 37, we read the same account. And it says basically the same thing. But here they are and Jesus is going, <laughs> come on, guys, catch up with me here. I'm the Messiah. In Matthew 26 then, verses 59 through 67, but especially verse 64, but we'll start reading the whole thing. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they didn't find any. Though many false witnesses came forward, finally two came forward and declared, this fellow said that he is able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. The high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah the Son of God. You have said so, Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. That got their attention. They understood that. He just said, I am who David was talking about. I am the one who is sitting at the right hand of the Father. I am the Lord. I am the Messiah. Yes, I am. And the high priest tore his clothes and said, he's spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look now, you've heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He is worthy of death, they answered. Then they spit in his face and they struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, prophesy to us, Messiah, who is it that hit you? Of course, Mark in verse chapter 14 gives us the same information there but the thing is Jesus is the Lord Jesus is God Jesus does sit at the right hand of the Father Peter then uses that quote alright let's go one more before we go to Peter's in Mark 16 and verse 19 it says, after the Lord Jesus has spoken to them, 
He was taken up into heaven and set at the right hand of the God. This is the, the ascension as we would call it. It's when he was taken up in the clouds. And he goes up and he's sitting where? At the right hand of the Father. Who is he? He's the Lord. He's the Lord. He is God. There is no question that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, that Jesus Christ is Lord, that Jesus Christ is God. Peter then uses that same quote in Acts 2 and verse 34 during his sermon on the day of Pentecost. And in verse, starting in verse 29 we read where he says, Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and he was buried and his tomb is here today. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath who had placed one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit, and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend into heaven. And yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore let all Israel be assured that this God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. The prophecy came true. The prophecy came true in the form of Jesus Christ. In the form of Jesus of Nazareth. In the form of this man who walked among us. God walking among us. And he went to that cross and he died on that cross. But you see what? He didn't stay there. He's risen. And he sits at the right hand of the Father. We serve a risen Savior. He didn't. You know, it's not like he died and he was buried and that was the end of it. That was the end of it. Paul even says, boy, we're most people most pitied, right? If that's all there is to it. But that's not the end of it. He was raised from the dead. And in Acts chapter 7, when Stephen is about to be stoned, they're already gathering up the stones. They're ready to stone Stephen over what he's been saying. <laughs> and Stephen. you got to love Stephen. The attitude of this, this brother. When the members of Sanhedrin heard this, <laughs> they were furious. And gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God. And Jesus standing at the right hand of God. I'm going to cry reading this. That's what Bill thought. Look, he said. I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. You know, I'm, I'm not crying because I'm sad. I'm crying because I'm so happy. Because Jesus is risen. And because he's risen, all his promises are true. And because he's risen, we have life. Not only here in this world do we have an abundant life, but we have an abundant spiritual life. We have an abundant life beyond this world where we will live with him forever. You 
see in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting in verse 20, we read this. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all died, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in turn, Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him, then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to the Father after he's destroyed all dominion and authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. You see, Jesus is victorious. He's victorious over sin. And because of that, we've come to him and been forgiven. But he's victorious over death, which means that after this life, we have life. We have life in him. We have life with him. In heaven. This is not the end. This is the beginning. We have an eternity to spend with our Lord. As we read further down through this discourse in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we get down to verse 51 and it says, Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we'll all be changed in the flash and the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable. And we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself in imperishable and the mortal in immortality. When the perishable has changed, has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. The power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. You know, sometimes we get through go, going through this life and things get tough, don't they? Things get hard. Things sometimes just seem impossible. They sometimes thing, seem like things that we can't do anything about. How, how often have you felt just totally out of control? How about daily? Just feel like you're out of control. You know, it amazes me when I see people that act like they've got it all together. I wonder what happens when their head hits the pillow at night. Do they think they have it all together so much that they can let, lay their head down on the pillow and just go to sleep? Maybe they do. <coughs> My bet is that they probably do a little tossing and turning. You know, I've counseled a lot of people over the years. And one of the things I've noticed is that people aren't very good at being alone. You ever notice that? People just are not very good at being alone. Because they get alone and they start thinking. And you get alone and you start thinking, and that's why we have so many problems in this world today, because people get alone and they start thinking, and then they try to, to deaden it in some way, shape, or form. They try to look for a way out because they're not happy with themselves or who they are. But you know, Jesus came into this world and he lived among us. And he dealt with everything we deal with. He, he was here. 
And he knows what it's like. And he says, come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. He tells us that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. In other words, he doesn't want to put any pressure on us. He wants to lift it off of us. That's what he did. He took the pressure of sin away. And he says, the only thing that's holding you down now is you. So let go of it. Follow me. I promise you it's better. And I promise you eternity. Where I am. At the right hand of the Father. You know, when that's over with and he hands the keys back to the Father... That means that the victory is complete. Death no longer has hold over any. Not only death from sin, but death in this physical life is gone. And we have a life now and forever with God and with Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Master, our Savior, our brother and our friend. Let's walk together in service to Christ. We have uh, one birthday this coming week. Uh, Kim Gilliland on the third. Is anyone else celebrating a birthday this week? Okay, would you join me in wishing her a happy birthday? Happy birthday to you, to Jesus be true. May God richly bless you. Happy birthday to you. Uh, we also have one anniversary, uh, Scott and Martha Wingard today. Uh, is anyone else celebrating an anniversary this week? Okay. Happy anniversary to you, to Jesus be true. May God richly bless you. Happy anniversary to you. Um, we have a few announcements. Uh, the worship schedules for July, for those of you who participate in the worship service, are back in the vestibule. Um, this evening, tonight's service at 6 p.m. will be a, a prayer night. Uh, also, I think we announced last week that St. Paul's is uh, open for visitation once again. Um, Chuck would love to, to see anyone who could make it up, and they have uh, extended the hours to, I'm not exactly sure, but it's pretty much morning, 7.30 in the morning to 7.30 in the evening or something like that. I mean, you can go not just 9 to 11 and 2 to 4 like it was, so hopefully that will make it more convenient for some to get up to see him. I know he greatly appreciates any company that he does get. Um, I have one card here as well that I'd like to read. It's just, this is for the sisters who put this all together. Uh, thank you so much for your care package. It really helped to relieve the stress of finals week, and it is so nice to know we have such supportive people in our lives. Thank you so much and miss you all, Nicholas. And then his brother, thank you for the care package during the semester. Thank you for all the support and I appreciate everything. Thank you, Tyler. And I will post that on the bulletin board. Uh, and of course, as always, uh, keep all those in our prayers, you know, that are on our prayer list, uh, especially I know for Carl's hoping to get some good news here this week, Carl? The 7th. The 7th, okay. 
following week, but keep it in your keep him in your prayers that he will continue to heal and so that when he gets to the doctors they tell him he's he's he does not need surgery. Uh, also uh, Eddie, continue to pray for Eddie and Chuck and and Donna. Uh, for Bud, as you can tell he's he's you can tell just to look at him and talk to him. He's been Bud I call him Bud <laughs> guy. <laughs> that his uh, um, shoulder, that they can come to some resolution. He has been suffering for quite some time with that. Uh, I remember Mary Hatton, who is also in the uh, nursing facility in New Wilmington, and Diane Alley, and special prayers this week. Uh, Going to honor Penny and I and our family. So we thank you for that in advance. Um, one more thing. I, I caught Nancy as she was walking back the aisle this morning and asked her how she was doing, and she said beaming, which you can see her her family is here, and so you can understand that. Um, and they are all here to remember and celebrate the life of Dominic. And, uh, and, as, and Dominic was... Uh, wonderful influence to me, I know, and to so many others, and and we all want to remember them. Um, not just Dominic, but I mean, Sperry and Gail and Bill and Jim and and uh, Hazel and um, on and on. on and on. Yeah, I was, yeah. <laughs> Bernie recently, John. You know, I mean, it's just the list goes on and on, and. What a what a wonderful influence they have been to all of us, I'm sure. And uh, so we want to keep them in our hearts and in our minds. Thank God that he put them in our lives. Our closing hymn, as soon as I find it, is number 397. And following that, uh, Jim Mischick is going to lead us in a prayer. Brightly beams our Father's mercy from his lighthouse evermore. But to us he gives the keeping of the lights along the shore. Let the lower lights be burning, send a gleam across the wave. Some poor fainting, struggling seaman, you may rescue, you may save. <coughs> Night. Our sin has settled, loud the angry billows roar. Eager eyes are watching, longing for the lights along the shore. Let the lower lights be burning. Send a gleam across the wave. Some poor fainting, struggling seaman, you may rescue, you may save. Trim your feeble lap, my brother. Some poor sailor tempest toss, trying now to make the harbor in the darkness may be lost. Let the lower lights be burning, send the gleam across the wave some poor fainting struggling seaman 
You may rescue, you may save. Our Father and our God, we're so thankful for this time that we've had together here this morning to join in worship to you, for the strength that we draw from the fellowship that we enjoy when we're together. Father, for the message that we hear from your word and the strength that we, and the knowledge that we gain from that. We thank you for all these things and pray that they might continue as we go forward. Father, we're mindful of those, as were mentioned, that have passed on before us all the examples that we had, the knowledge and the influence that they imparted to us, and we thank you so much that we've had that kind of influence in our lives. Father, as we've come to the end of this service, we ask that you would go with us through this week and guide us, keep us in the palm of your hand, help us to do your will, keep us safe and healthy and help us to encourage others to turn to you for the salvation that they need. It's through Jesus that we pray. Amen.